gets home on an RBI by Hunter Pence. <laughs> oh, my, that was fun. Live from Minute Bay Park in Houston, Texas, Fox Sports Houston brings you Houston Astros baseball. Tonight, after a thrilling win last night, the Astros play game two of their three-game set against the Los Angeles Dodgers. Good evening, everybody. Bill Brown and Jim Deshays. That was a furious finish last night, and the Astros were really pumped up at the end of that game. Probably the best win of the year. Fun ball game. Well pitched by Kershaw. The Dodgers, Norris for the Astros, pitched well, and a dramatic come-from-behind win. Everybody was jacked up after that one last night. There were some things that required explaining. Now we turn the page on that and move on to our pitching matchup. Chad Billingsley goes for the Dodgers, a right-hander with excellent stuff, and Jay Happ has pitched well at home for the Astros. Indeed, he has happened. Four home starts, two and two of the 3.16 ERA. Uh, look at Chad Billingley, uh, Billingsley, last four starts, 0 and 3, with a 2.25 ERA. The Dodgers have scored a total of three runs in those four ball games. Astros are hoping that trend continues. And coming up next, Bill Hall had a huge game last night. Four hits. He keyed a big double steal. The Astros made a lot of things happen, including a Sanchez 11 pitch walk, a born double into the corner, a Hunter Pence game winner last night as they came from behind in the bottom of the ninth and nail it. Sports Houston is brought to you by the Progressive Insurance Group for money saving car insurance quote call 1 800 Progressive today. And by Southwest Airlines New Rapid Rewards on limited reward seats and no blackout dates. Greg Lucas here down on the field. The Astros have taken the field, so let's go up to the booth with Bill Brown and Jim Deshaies. Thank you, Greg. Game two of this homestand. Arizona will come in over the weekend. And the Astros will be making two trips to L.A. this year. Here is Don Manningly's lineup card for this game. Rafael Fercal leads off at shortstop. Jamie Carroll plays second with James Loney at first base. The Houston native followed by Matt Kemp at center field. 
Jerry Sands is the right fielder with Deonor Navarro the catcher. Jay Gibbons plays left field with Aaron Miles at third base tonight. And it's Chad Billingsley on the mound for L.A. It's uh, lefty Jay Happ for the Astros tonight. Jay starting for the tenth time. He's three and five with an ERA of 5.30. He was a losing pitcher last time out in St. Louis, but a quality start. Six innings, four hits, three runs allowed. Astros got beat four to two in that one. The fly ball pitcher, and here are the outfielders who will track him down. Lee Bourne and Pence infield of Johnson. Barmas Hall, boy, what a night he had last night. Not, not only at the play, but he made a spectacular play in the field as well. Brett Wallace is over there at first, and Quintero does the catching. Jay ready to go, and the Dodgers come up with Rafael for call, leading it off with Bill Hall ready at second base for call. Getting all set. The switch hitter at 171 has driven in a couple. He had one hit in four at bats last night. He tried to butt as he let off the game last night. And there is strike one with Mike Estabrook, the home plate umpire. Jay Happ is making only his second career start against the Dodgers. He has no career decisions against them. Missing outside. It goes to a 1 1 count. Last time out in six innings, Jay threw 119 pitches, giving up four hits and three runs in St. Louis. He was the loser 4 to 2 in that game. And then Barmas gets the first ground ball of this one, turns it into out number one. And Jamie Carroll will follow. Jay with his season high eight strikeouts in that start in St. Louis. The Dodgers are near the bottom of the league and run scored with 169. And they have sunk to a low for this season of seven games under 500. Jamie Carroll, 316, no homers, four runs batted in. Brings a five game hitting streak. And he's in the top 10 in batting average. A very good start for Carroll. He looks at ball one. Aaron Miles played second last night. Carroll has hit 374 on the road to lead all major league players. On this road trip, he is six for 13 with a couple of doubles in Chicago against the White Sox. Veteran having a nice year. Astros playing the opposite way in the outfield. Singles hitter. He doesn't hit the ball out of the ballpark. He looks at that for strike two, or ball two rather. Two balls and a strike to Carroll. Carroll had a four hit game on Friday to tie his career high. He's been among the dependable Dodgers in reaching base. First fly ball hits for left field. Carlos Lee moving over toward the line. Gets there for the second out. I'm ready to eat my words there when he said it. He didn't hit the ball out of the ballpark. I thought maybe he <laughs> caught one there. Well, with his left field wall being so close at Minute Maid Park. It does put a whole different light on things, and a guy can be a home run hitter here if he hits it in just the right spot. And that's, that's always one of the challenges for the right handed hitters not to get too pull conscious in this ballpark, especially the guys that come out of some of the bigger stadiums where it's hard to leave. You come in here and you look at that short porch and left, and you know, I don't want to try to hook a ball, take advantage of that, try to pull, and then you come out of your game. Loney extended his hitting streak, and there's ball one to James. He Came through with a single last night at little infield squibber one for four to move his hitting streak to nine games. Lefties have held him to a 186 batting average. He takes that one for ball two. James, a Houston native, has enjoyed his games at Minute Maid Park to the tune of 340 in 15 games with two homers, 11 runs batted in. What is it about these guys when they come home? I can figure. Chris Young. Yeah, Diamondbacks seems to always have big games when he comes here. He'll be here over the weekend. Only be distracted. He yeah, be busy is. with friends and family. But it must pump him up. Must work the other way. Only takes a look at that one. It's a strike. Two and two to James, who led the club in hits last year. Drove in 88 runs. Dodgers going through a rough stretch. They've lost eight of their last ten. They are without some of their top performers, such as Andre Ethier out of the lineup again tonight. He pitch hit last night. Three balls, two strikes to Loney. Third baseman Casey Blake is on the disabled list. Closer Jonathan Broxton 
Ong Chi Kuo, the setup man, all injured right now. There's mm. a walk to Loney. Couldn't have missed by much. Yep. Was doing the walk off. He thought he clipped the inside corner. As part of our Fox Sports Supports charitable initiative, we are proud to wear these pins during our 2011 MLB on Fox Sports Houston season to support Stand Up to Cancer and their work to fund groundbreaking research that helps accelerate treatment to patients. For more information, please visit standuptocancer.org slash Fox Sports. Loney, the base runner, and it's camp in the box. Last night he hit his 100th career homer. And this one goes to center field off the end of the bat. Michael Bourne lays out for it and robs Kemp. So the guy who scored the winning run last night makes a sparkling play in the first inning of this game to put up a zero for Jay Happ in the first. Batten and Tool, shortstop, slip love, Clint Barnes. Bat third, Captain Underpants, Hunter Pants. Bat fourth, the Caballo, Carlos Lee. First base, we got Brett Wallace batting fifth. Behind Wallace, we got our third baseman, Chris Johnson, playing third. Behind him, big night last night from Bill Hall. Hope to keep it going. Behind that, we got Quintero batting eight. And on the bump tonight, our own good buddy, Jay Happ. Thank you, Bud Norris. Here's Michael Bourne leading it off. He leads the majors in steals. First pitch from Chad Billingsley is good for strike one to Bourne. 270 for Michael. No homers, 12 runs batted in, and he had a very important two run double in the ninth inning last night to tie it. Billingsley missing there. Goes to a 1 1 count on Michael. Who was one for four in last night's game? JD mentioned it, but Billingsley has really been dealing without run support lately. It's a two ball one strike count with a two and four record but a respectable ERA. Yeah 347 ERA 62 and a third innings. Good strikeout numbers. Batting average against just 223 only three home runs allowed. Michael is out of the box but that will slice foul and he was half hearted in running up the first baseline. Seemingly knew that that ball would wind up a souvenir. Defensively, the Dodgers set up this way tonight. Given Kemp, excuse me, Gibbons, Kemp, and Sands in the outfield. Miles gets to start at third for call at short. Jamie Carroll, night off last night, he's the second sacker. Loney pretty smooth down there at first. And Navarro behind the plate. Rod Barajas, a little bit nicked up. Billingsley from Defiance, Ohio, goes to work on the 2 2. Way upstairs. Full count. Michael Bourne has scored 30 runs. And to get on for Clint Barmas and Hunter Pence behind him. And he hits a line drive this time toward the left field line, but caught on the run by Gibbons. One out. Good A.B. there. Saw some pitches, hit the ball hard. Yes. 
quite get on top of that ball and put a little air under it. Well, allowed, allowed Gibbons time to run it down, but a good swing of the bat nonetheless. Gibbons got over. Now here's Barmas. Went at 216 with a homer as four runs batted in. Taking that one and it's strike one call. Clint last night had a hit and a walk and he was hit by an 0-2 pitch in the ninth inning. That was one of the keys to keeping the rally going for the Astros. This foul back. He's hitting 280 now in his last seven games, starting to come around. Coming back from a broken hand. He said that bone in his left hand is not bothering him. Right over the plate, and he fouled it back. Still 0-2 for Billingsley. Billingsley three and three lifetime against the Astros in six starts with an ERA 4.00. And unbelievable here, three and 0 in this ballpark with an ERA below one. Got it foul. Billingsley has all four pitches: fastball, curve, slider, and change. With a little cut fastball. Yeah, 26 years old, a first round pick in 03. He was 12 and 11 last year. You see his very good numbers here. Round ball to third. Aaron Miles. Two outs. And it's Hunter Pence. Dodgers have allowed only 13 runs in the first inning of their games this year. Hunter extended his hitting streak to five games last night. And he got the game winner. That was his second hit. He went two for five in the game. Picked up his 36th run batted in. That ties him for third in the National League with a 298 average and six long balls. During his five game hitting streak, he's 10 for 23 for a 435 average. Billingsley has seen his ERA come down. Four consecutive starts. The Dodgers have lost all four of those games, and he personally has three losses. Four to one, four to one, one nothing, three to one. Mm. Not scored at all with this righty on the hill. It's one and one. Clayton Kershaw looked very good last night. In six innings, he gave up one run. All the way. The Astros mounted that three run ninth inning to win it four to three. The Major League Baseball Network reported that the Astros had the longest stretch of games when they trailed in the ninth by two runs or more without winning. Leaders of the game brought to you by United. Proud, proud to fly the Houston Astros. And you see the note on Hunter Pence, and it's a one ball, two strike count. They said the Astros have played 178 games when they trail by two or more. Going to the ninth without winning until last night. August 2nd of 2008. Ooh. The last time they did that. Against the Mets. That's a big breaking ball and a strike three call. Billingsley has a one, two, three first and it's scoreless after one.
ticket offer, including food and drink. Sounds fun, guys. Oh, Don't yeah. you know? Always a good time. Jerry Sands leads it off. <laughs> hey, we're going to have a little bit of fun later on in this game, aren't we, Bill? What are we going to do, Patty? Well, can I tell him? No. All right, I'm not going to tell him, but you guys do not want to leave. You want to be watching the game come the third inning because we are pulling Bill Brown out of the box, literally and figuratively. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. One ball, one strike. Jerry Sands, and we're pulling Patty into the box. 239 for Sands. One homer and 12 runs batted in. Two balls and a strike now to Sands. I'm having a hard time, boy. This is a kind of a year long trend with Jay. It seems like he gets squeezed more than any other pitcher on the Astros staff. Maybe I just have a left handed bias. Well, maybe he's the sweetheart of Major League Baseball. He's always getting squeezed. Yeah. Two balls, two strikes. Maybe it's because he likes to work that inside part of the plate against righties, and that's a tough call to get. I don't know. Could be. Whatever reason, he throws a lot of pitches really close to the plate that are called balls. There you see the pattern. We see one of those out of the zone, and yet the count's two and two. Well, the one I liked was a ball. What do we know? Just that Bayou Bash is coming up over that's the weekend. All, that's all, yeah. Dodge is pretty high on this young man. Big time power. 35 bombs in the minor leagues last year. Here we go. That's right. There we go. Sands caught looking. Strikeout number one for half. Cannot take this one ball four strike pitch. No way. <laughs> That'd be a little bit more aggressive on that one and four count. <laughs> he didn't like that one. That's Deanna Navarro. Switch hitting catcher who started last night as well. JD mentioned Rod Barajas banged up with the right hand injury from Sunday's game of the White Sox. There's strike one. 133 for Navarro with a homer and an RBI. Off the end of the bat, it rolls to Barmas. Two outs for Jay Happ. Usually he's a fly ball pitcher. He got Navarro reaching for that one. Air conditioning is pumping here. It's been a warm day outside at Minute Maid Park. Day game coming tomorrow. 1230 airtime for Astros Live tomorrow. It's Jay Gibbons batting. It'll be Ted Lilly, the lefty, going for the Dodgers. There is strike one to Gibbons. 206, no homers and three runs batted in. Anewi Rodriguez going for the Astros. We're still checking with him every day to make sure about that pronunciation. <laughs> is that the latest? Okay, is it still? Yep. Oh, Naomi. Okay. That's a shot to right field over Hunter Pence. That's going to be a line drive homer. And a 1 0 lead as Jay Gibbons hits number one. There's something about Jay Gibbons versus Astros pitchers. They seem to bring out some of his best games. Very good career numbers. He's 14 for 37. This is fifth career homer against the Astros. That swing is uh, long in the strike zone. Good path and then down through with good extension. See that top hand comes over after the contact. Aaron Miles looks at strike one. Which hitter moving from second to third tonight, 285 with nine runs batted in for the former Astro farmhand, Miles. No balls, two strikes. Chad Billingsley on deck. Now one run already, Chad. That's an embarrassment of riches for <laughs> Billingsley, the way the Dodgers have scored for him. Well, last night, Kemp provided a second inning homer for Kershaw. And then two more runs came in the seventh inning when they pinch hit for Kershaw. Well, what happens when you go through a run like Billingsley, even if you don't complain about it, everybody is aware of the fact that they're not scoring for you. And it can become a bit of a mental thing. So even if you're not complaining about it, somebody had a home run like that, somebody, hey, there's your run, stop whining, go get the shutout. Still owe it too. If they get a souvenir down the left field line. Jay Happ is six and three in this ballpark. 
with a career ERA of 3.20. That's fouled into the seats. Right. For Jay, of course, is to, you know, he's a fly ball pitcher, so he's going to give up his fair share of home runs, but keep people off base when you give them up, you should be okay. Nice play, young man. Congratulations. One and two to Miles. Rising like a phoenix. <laughs> Patty Smith uh, is eyeing that fan for fan of the game honors. Fly ball to right. Hunter Pence comes in. Am I now? <laughs> More to come on that later as More the Dodgers lead <laughs> one to nothing. Scoring technique. You have to keep the hits in red. Look at these guys. <laughs> One to nothing ball game. The Dodgers have the lead over the Astros on the Gibbons home run. Good group of ball players watching there. They were on the field uh, for batting practice today. Saw them parading around. Carlos Lee's in the box. And hitting one in the air, the left fielder Gibbons breaks over. One pitch, one out for Billingsley in the second inning. When Billingsley first came into the league. Efficiency was an issue for him. A lot of deep counts, a lot of high pitch outings, and of course with a prized young arm like that, they were very cautious with him. And now they, you know, taking the restraints off a little bit. And he's become a little bit more economical. Still capable of piling up some big strikeout games, but. Decided to be a guy who pitches to contact a little bit more so he can stay in games longer. Brett Wallace at 315 with three homers has 15 runs batted in. He was a pinch hitter last night. 0 for 1 in that game. There's ball one with Carlos Lee starting at first base last night against the left hander Clayton Kershaw. 400 at home for Brett. And that just jumped up as a shot run by the third baseman Miles into the corner. Headed for second base. Gibbons will have to dig it out. A double for Wallace, his 13th of the year. Tying Hunter Pence. It's a good example of what a hitter. Is letting the ball travel, letting the ball get deep, not trying to get out in front of that one and, and hook it, willing to just stay on it and shoot it the other way. He's aboard for Chris Johnson. 220 for Chris. Five homers, 22 runs batted in. The fine line between letting the ball travel and being late. Yeah, but 
what, one tenth of a second or something? <laughs> Strike one. It's all about the results, right? You ping one into the corner. I'm just letting the ball get deep. You pop it up. I was a little late getting started. <laughs> CJ was 0 for 4 last night. Phil Hall's on deck. That's roll foul third base side for Miles and it's 0 and 2 for Billingsley. As I mentioned earlier Billingsley tough to hit yielding just a 223 batting average. This year right handed hitters 211 lefties 240. He's not given up a home run to a right handed hitter and 130 at bats coming into this game. He's only allowed three all year. That's strike three. Second strikeout for Billingsley. And Bill Hall follows. Interesting reaction by CJ there. As if he was convinced he was going to see something other than the fastball. The way he looks out of Billingsley goes, wait a minute, that's not what the report had on you there. <laughs> Bill Hall with four for four last night. And that excellent play JD talked about up the middle and the double steal. Quite a night of it. There's ball one. Hall gets the breaking pitch up. 244 is his average. He has two homers, 13 runs batted in. He's the one who decided on the double steal. And Angel Sanchez was at first when Bill Hall was at second. They pulled it off in the ninth inning against Kenley Jansen. And the Astros were down to their final out at the time. Trailing by two. Then it was second and third after the double steal. Michael Bourne brought them home to tie it with a two run double. Well, that was a key play in the game. Yeah, it was because if Sanchez is still on first, the Dodgers are playing no doubles, and Loney's, Loney's closer to the line, and he probably fields Bourne's ground ball. Mm -hmm. Strike two and one. And Brad Mills gives his players the freedom to do that sort of thing. It was Bill Hall's reading when he was at second base that he could take third. Kenley Jansen was not paying a lot of attention to him. But the key was that Sanchez also had to be able to steal second. Or it really didn't work out that well. Right, because Sanchez was the tying run. He's the one that mattered. Exactly. And, and, and Sanchez is at bat. To a certain extent, set up the stolen base because it was an 11 pitch at bat, and, and, and Jansen was just under siege at that point, and he was just focusing every everything he could, all of his concentration on home plate. And big righty was not particularly quick to the plate to begin with, was ripe for the taking. Sure was. A very alert base running by Hall, but also Sanchez had to be ready to go, and he was. Dodgers didn't even make a throw; they didn't even have coverage. Strikeout victim to end the second inning. No runs a hit and a man left. It is one to nothing Dodgers after two.
We'll score top of the third. Kids Free All Summer presented by Minute Maid is back and available for every home game this summer. For every full price adult ticket you purchase in the outfield or view deck sections, you can get up to two free tickets for kids 14 years of age and under. Do it at Astros.com. And now, perhaps for the first time in Houston sports history, play by play from Patty Smith. Well, thank you so much, JD. Do I sound like Bill Brown? <laughs> Get your brownie going. I got my brownie going. JD tells me I'm uh, making history following Anita Martini here. First female to do play by play, so I'm going to enjoy it. Chad Billingsley at the plate. Of course, I start with the pitcher. It's easy. It's easy. You don't have to bear chances down because no. chances are he's just going to pop up. Yeah. Well, Although he's not bad. He's, he's uh, he can swing a little bit. All right. Well, I'll do what I can. There's an inside pitch there. One ball and one strike. Two balls and one strike on this one talking to JD. And Brownie has gone rogue. He's out roaming the stands. We'll have to track him down. Yeah, you know, he may order. find that's not as easy as it looks. He thinks I got the tougher job here, and he's just going to go take a little vacation. It's not hard finding that uh, fan of the game. It's a lot of candidates. Three balls and one strike to Billingsley. It's all about just throwing one right down the channel. Yeah, so that's a pretty good swing right there. That's, that's better than average for a pitcher. And he fouls it off into the upper deck, bouncing back down low into the family section down there. I think J.R. Toll's dad got that one. So any tips for me here? Well, you could punch that strikeout. There it is. It's my first strikeout. And Billingsley <laughs> yeah. Here, here's strikes your tip, out. Patty, here's your tip. Don't mess up Brownie's book. Yeah. He has got the most meticulous scorebook in all of baseball. All right. You are under... All right. A significant amount of pressure there. Yeah. Well, I got it. I, I wrote my K down. Color coded, all kinds of different notations, it's like hieroglyphics. All right, Rafael Furcal up to the plate. He's been out for a while, right? With a yeah, slit thumb. in the third, yeah, his thumb. Yeah, broke his thumb, and we saw him last night on the bases with kind of a uh, protective pad, it almost like a cast of some sort he, he wears when he gets on base. And he fouls one back off here. Ooh, almost went right into. Lions booth over there. He ground out to shortstop in the first. 0 for 1 on the night. He's averaging 167 in his 10 games, which is 36 at bats. So a little bit early in the season for him, but tries to lay down a bunt there, and it goes foul over towards the Astros dugout. For call one of three switch hitters in the Dodger lineup tonight. Navarro and Miles also switch hitters. For call has been. Uh, Pretty good from both sides of the plate throughout his career. Most switch hitters better left than right, and primarily because they get a lot more at-bats from the left side. Yeah, and you say Dodgers lineup, but that's kind of a loose term. They haven't been able to establish much of a lineup. No, it's, uh, and, you know, the Astros have been fairly lucky. Uh, throughout this season, they missed a lot of front-line players. And, you know, Ethier banged up. He got the pinch hit last night, but uh, not in there again tonight. We missed uh, Holiday and Berkman for a game and a half in St. Louis. We missed Adam Lind in Toronto. That guy could be a fan of the game, Patty. Maybe Brownie will track him down. Maybe he will. I'm uh, I'm interested in seeing who he gets. I'm thinking he may have uh, just someone in his back pocket here that he's already lined up. Two balls and two strikes with one out. That one's fouled no. off. No. What about this scenario? What if that foul ball hit Brownie right in the coconut and they had to be carted out here in a stretcher and you were hung doing... Eight innings of play-by-play. -play. Wow. That would be impressive to the new owner. <laughs> That's called team player. And there's a ground ball to the shortstop and two outs. Happy's thrown first pitch strikes to seven of ten batters. That's better than normal for him. Jimmy. Yeah, that's you know, you know, he's a guy who throughout his career has had a fair number of walks, but for the most part he's been able to pitch around him. And, you know, and he likes to work out of the zone, so the little key for him is to throw strike one and then expand, go up with that fastball as he likes to do, and then start to mix in the breaking ball. If he gets ahead, he'll get the Dodger hitters to chase that high fastball. And Jamie Carroll up to bat. One ball, no strikes. Jamie's got a 314 average. No home runs, four RBI. And, you know, here's a guy that could be relegated back to the bench with the call coming back. Casey Blake just uh, possibly, you know, a week or two out. But he's one of the, really one of their bright spots. Yeah, he's, uh, 
having a pretty good year, but you know, he, he fits best as a utility player. There's certain players that the mindset is if he's getting 400, 500 at bats, then we're probably not having a real good year because you know we like him coming off the bench, and if he's getting that many at bats, somebody's either hurt or somebody underperformed to the point where you know he lost his job. Three balls and no strikes to Jamie Carroll. Carroll's been at it a good long while. You know, and I think uh, in talking about Brownie, Brownie's been at this for a good long while, and I think, you know, you appreciate what he does, I'm sure, especially for you with him not being in here. And the fans of Houston really, um, you know, have got this something special in Bill Brown. 25th year for Brownie up here. So big anniversary. Yeah, oh, yeah, he uh, <laughs> he makes my job so easy. Well, we'll see how he makes my job. <laughs> because he is ultimately prepared, and, you know, I, I'm, I don't know how many times I've just thrown out some – Goofball question. I wonder the last time that happened. The next thing you know, Brownie's flipping through the scorebook, and he's got it. Well, I'll tell you, there's like 8,000 stacks of cards up here, 14 different colors of pens, all kinds of notes. I couldn't even begin to decipher where to look for the information. That's kind of half the feat <laughs> itself is just where to find it. And, and then finding it and then being able to interpret it. True enough. How's that? <laughs> True enough, J.D. And Carroll fouls off another one, still 3-2 count with two outs. Well, as we mentioned earlier, Carroll, although he did hit a fairly deep fly ball to left field first time up, he's not a power hitter, so this is a situation with Jay where you're not really trying to be too fine here. You don't want to walk them and get into the meat of their order, so this, this, this situation calls for aggressiveness. Didn't do it. All right, well, there's our first walk of the game here, and Bill Brown has uh, got our first person. Let's see what you got, Bill. Where are you? We are down the left field line, Patty, with Lisa Klein, and she is our progressive fan of the game. Lisa, this is an unusual vantage point. How did you select this? Well, we love this section. First of all, it's Power Play Tuesday, so we always take advantage of the Powerade labels, and it's a great way to bring the family to the game. Only my daughter's in town, so just the two of us today. But we always sit out here. It's just uh, the Astros have always made it very affordable to bring your family to the game. So we, this is our favorite place to sit. What's your daughter's name? My daughter's name is Leia. Leia, are you enjoying it? Yeah, it's going good. Okay. Now, <laughs> you go way, way back to Astrodome days, don't you, Lisa? I sure do. I was born and raised in Houston, and I was an Astro buddy growing up. And Cesar Cedeno, Jimmy Wynn were my Astro buddies. My brother was Larry Durker. So we used to go out and sit in the outfield out in the Astrodome. And when the roof leaked, we used to bring our umbrellas and protect ourselves from the leaks. <laughs> <laughs> no such worries here. How do you like the vantage point? You can see all these fielders from this perspective, exactly how they move around between pitches. How do you like that? Yeah, it's a great vantage point. You miss a little corner, but I know Carlos is out there making all the plays. So we're in good shape. Yeah, you have to trust something, don't yeah, you? we have to trust them. So after all these years uh, and the Astros buddies and all these experiences, uh, World Series year, your favorite? What, what are your standout memories? You know, just I just love the game of baseball, and I've always been a big Astro fan, and good times or bad times, we're always fans, and we always come to the game and just have a good time and uh, just know they're always going to try their best, and that's all you can do. Uh, you were pointing out it's, it's actually very cool up here at the top of the stadium. Section 407, the air conditioning blows up here, so it's a great ah, place to sit. A little inside information there. CJD, so if you ever get your shot at this, and I know you'll be <laughs> asking for it, just remember that. Yeah, I'll, if I go up that high, I might start to uh, hyperventilate. <laughs> well, Lisa Klein is a progressive fan of the game. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. This is the highlight of the year for me. Well, it's for our sure. highlight, too, especially to talk to a longtime fan. Nice to meet you. Thanks nice for being here. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Back to you, Patty. All right. Thank you very much, Bill Brown. Nice job. Very impressive. James Loney with a single up the middle. I, I, am, I can't tell you how impressed I am with that. You took a hike up there, too, up to Section 407. That's not easy to get to. Now, and my favorite part of being in, in that part of the ballpark, in, in upper deck of any ballpark, the fans, you know, there's an old line about the, uh, the knowledge of the fans is, Indirect, indirectly proportional to the proximity to home plate and the, the fans up there are very knowledgeable but it's, I always get a kick out of the, the fans screaming at a blown call on a, like a tag play at second base from 300 feet away. 
What I get kind of a kick out of is uh, he turned that little progressive fan of the game interview into uh, that, that was quite, I never get to go that long. You guys would have my hide if I interviewed that long. <laughs> you should have told him to give it up. <laughs> no, I was thoroughly enjoying it. But he, he looked very comfortable out there. You might not get him back. He was in his element. Uh, I am impressed. Bill, if you can hear me, feel free to stop and chat with someone else on your way back. You're doing a great job. All right, Matt Kemp at the plate. Runners on first, runners on second. One ball, no strikes with two outs. And there's a ground ball to Bill Hall. Oh, does not make the play on that. Bill juggles that a little bit. Everyone is safe. Loads the bases. He made a sparkling play on a ball kind of like that last night. He had to deal with a very difficult hop, and he had to deal with screen by the umpire and that may have come into play again here tonight you see he starts to his right and then slams on the brakes Kemp hits that ball with a lot of pace but that's an e4 and potentially a costly one now as the dodgers have the bases juiced for jerry sands a strikeout victim last time but as i mentioned he's he's got legit pop 35 minor league home runs last year for sands yeah and he's really finding his stride right now Ooh, inside pitch. One ball, no strikes. Space is loaded. That's, a, that's the uh, interesting thing, the nature of this sport. Bill Hall last night, four for four, could do no wrong. Made, uh, made that play I talked about. Instigated the key double steal in the ninth. And now he's, he's the biggest cheerleader out there for Jay Happ. Get me off the hook. Absolutely. And, and that's got to be the mindset of Hap. You can't you can't take on that woe is me mentality. My guys are letting me down. You got you got to pick them up right here. Yeah, and I interviewed uh, Bill Hall in the post game last night, and uh, he was just you know had such a great night, and he uh, got a little emotional. That is a grand slam. Not what the Astros wanted to see, not what Jay Happ wanted to see, and as you said, certainly not what Bill Hall wanted to see. Grand slam for Jerry Sands. Wow. Two outs, nobody on. Walk to Carroll, single Loney, air off the bat of Matt Kemp, but now Sands unloads on that fastball. You could tell by his reaction right there. He knew he got a whole lot of that one. Yeah, and all those runs unearned. All right, well that brings on Deanna Navarro, former Devil Ray. Jeez, that's a toughie. Well, yeah, now well, it's kind of ironic because we've been talking uh, for the first couple of innings about how the Dodgers haven't scored for Chad Billingsley. Pretty much uh, at all in his last four starts. Three runs total for the Dodgers in Billings these last four starts, but one swing of the bat. Now he's got a five run cushion. The good news for the Astros is there's a lot of baseball yet to be played. All right, well, on another note, with my research, Navarro is an animal lover. Is did that right? Really not, I did not know that. He's got a couple dogs, he's got a chameleon. He's got a chameleon. He's got a chameleon. And two birds unnamed. There's another long ball. Michael Bourne underneath it and makes the catch to end the inning, but not before the Dodgers score four. We'll take a break. Bill Brown will possibly be back. He is back in the booth. J.D., I've enjoyed it. Good job, Patty. Way to go. Uh, all right.
Doesn't count against her ERA. Yeah, her ERA is good. <laughs> They're all unearned. Thank you, Patty. Good job. And now the Astros come up with this 5 0 deficit, bottom of the third inning. Some Dodger fans here tonight. That's the usual occurrence. We'll see some Astros fans out west as well. Humberto Quintero will lead it off in the Astros' third inning. Dodgers and the Astros uh, used to have a pretty healthy rivalry. Of course, that's when they were both in the same division playing in the National League West back in the day. Quintero with nine runs batted in hopes to get aboard for Jay Happ. Now Billingsley, the recipient of that run support, he has not been getting this year. That one's in the air to right field. Sands waiting for it. One pitch one out for Billingsley. Well you know for sure if you're in Billingsley's shoes you must win this game. <laughs> yeah absolutely that's you know. Especially the way things have been going for him but yeah now they got a five spot on the board and. That's a comfort zone for a pitcher. Three nothing game you you know you still feel like you're one or two mistakes away from. A jeopardy but. Five run lead. Very comfortable feeling. Strike one to Jay Happ. Jay has hit 400 this year with six hits and 15 at bats. He's driven in three runs. He has a double. Very good year at the plate for Jay. It's 0 and 2 very quickly. Colorado pounced on Arizona, winning 12 4 in game one of their twin bill in Colorado. Cargo hit two homers to give him eight. Arizona, I was listening to that ball game on the way in. Arizona had an early lead. And the Rockies started hitting the ball out of the ballpark. The Rockies lost their pitcher, though. Dale Rosa went out in the third inning of that game with an injury, a tender elbow. Mm. Big loss for them. Greg Reynolds got the win for them. Two and two for Billingsley against Happ. Happ leads all starting pitchers to qualify with that 400 batting average. Billingsley gets a foul tip strikeout. That's his fourth. We go to Greg Lucas. It's time for this day in Astros history brought to you by the MD Anderson Cancer Center making cancer history and it was a comeback which of course the Astros need to do tonight. May 29, 1996 trailing seven to four in the ninth Houston Rock with three to tie it. They defeat the Cubs in 10 eight to seven. John Cangelosi getting the winning hit. Well we won't. See John Cangelosi getting the winning hit. There's nothing saying the Astros can't come from behind and win again. Oh sure, it's the third inning as JD pointed out. Ball one to Michael Bourne, who would like to get it started here with two outs. It's always nice to answer when a club has had a big inning and takes that five nothing lead. Two balls, no strikes for Michael. He worked the count full and hit a fly ball to left in the first. That rides upstairs for ball three. Michael's walked 22 times this season. And Barmas on deck. It's a strike and it's 3 1 now for Billingsley. Dodgers have some very good young arms in their rotation and we're seeing them in Kershaw and Billingsley, the first two spots. In this rotation, Ted Lilly goes tomorrow, an experienced lefty. Now it's three and two as Billingsley comes back. Looked like Michael was taking all the way there. Not a bad idea, down five. Likely to get pitch to hit here as he was on 3 1. Still a full count. Hiroki Kuroda is another in the rotation. He's having a pretty good year at five and four with a 3.11 ERA. Again, that kind of an ERA with five and four record speaks to the lack of run support. And some of that is Dodger Stadium. That's a good pitcher's ballpark. Upstairs, and Michael gets the walk. Number one. So, in a situation where you never should walk a guy with the hitter that you definitely should not walk, Billingsley still manages to walk Horn. And Kind of how things got started for the uh, Dodgers in the third when Jay had two outs, nobody on, and he wasn't able to make that 3 2 pitch to Jamie Carroll. Glenn Barmas bounced out to third in the first inning. 
Astros have come up against some very sturdy starting pitching here in the last week. You know, it's a, the situations are just pouring in there, but people will watch a game and just throw a strike. Sometimes it's not easy to throw a strike. Just make that eight foot putt. <laughs> yeah. Just, just don't, don't double fault yeah. at match point. Just get that seven pin. <laughs> One ball, one strike. Starting pitchers against the Astros the last eight games have averaged seven innings. And they have an ERA of 2.18. That's a tough pitch, and it's one and two. Winsley's hit a couple for strikes just on the fringes of the strike zone here on Barmas. They got a classic power pitcher's delivery. He's got strong legs. Reminds me a little bit of Tim Belcher. A liner to left. He got a breaking ball up and put a line drive swing on it. First and second, two outs now for Hunter Pence. Okay. Now here comes the error and then the grand slam. Okay. Lost his balance a little bit at the end of that one. Farmers with a good solid line drive single. Talk about uh, a lot of baseball game left, but you know, got to take advantage of opportunities when you get them. This is a golden one here with Hunter up a couple of men aboard. He's been so good with runners in scoring position. That good, as a matter of fact, 403. And again, last night in a game situation, he came through in the bottom of the ninth with the RBI single. He struck out in the first. Chopper goes foul. Time for a look at our Farmers Insurance Report card showing you Hunter Pence with five game winning runs batted in this season, tied for third most in the league. Behind Braun and Howard. Slicing liner over Loney up the right field line. Bourne will score. Barmas to third. Dave Clark will hold him, and it's five to one. RBI double. Hunter Pence once again he comes through with men in scoring position for double number 14 of the year, giving him 37 runs batted in. And just a little uh, thing of beauty. Carved piece down the right field line. He was trying to go that way, but sure was handy. That's hit number three for the Astros. Carlos Lee with a chance to make a real dent on the scoreboard here. He had a fly ball to left in the second inning. Carlos four for 18 in his career against Billingsley. Power of three so big in baseball third strike third out concentrate throughout the inning concentrate throughout the at bat and I'm not saying Billingsley didn't concentrate or hat but it just drives a manager or pitching coach nuts two outs nobody on walks. And now Carlos is up 2 0 in the count. Billingsley, who had been aggressive now. And a bit of a pickle, so he's pitching away from contact. Two and one. Nothing wrong with that. Cheating on the heaters, hoping he'd get a fastball he could jerk out of here. He got fooled by the breaking pitch, but that's just strike one. Red Wallace is on deck. Now it's three balls, one strike. And Carlos will be trying to look for something in a particular area. Kind of shrink that area, probably. The question is, does he sell out on a fastball on 3-1 like he did on 2-0? 
given that Billingsley threw him that slider 2-0. Full count. Pretty good. Two quality pitches by Billingsley behind in the count there. The 2-0 slider that fooled him, and then the 3-1 fastball that just painted the corner at the knees. Nice job by these Astro hitters coming back on Billingsley. Got too much of the plate with that fastball. Great at bat by Carlos. Right back in the center. Well, that's been his trademark over the year. That's just a good professional at bat. You know, he took the shot on 2 0, took the big aggressive swing, hoping he could run into a fastball, and knock it out here. He got fooled by that, but he knew he had a couple of strikes to play with. Took the borderline pitch for strike two. And then in a situation where he couldn't afford to take a third strike, put a nice swing on that fastball, didn't overswing. Just a good professional AB right there. 25 runs batted in for El Caballo. Brett Wallace doubled earlier. Mm. All one. Be careful going down there to Brett Wallace. True. 53 pitches for Billingsley. Got Quintero in half. He went 3 2 on Bourne, walked him, then the trouble started. That one's foul. Both rallies started with two outs, nobody on here in the third inning. Walking. Both instances got things started. Red Sox lead 2 to 1 at Cleveland. They've played six. Good movement there, and it's a one ball, two strike count now on Wallace. Billingsley growing up in Defiance, Ohio, was a football player. He suffered a ruptured spleen in football practice as a freshman, gave up that sport. It's two and two. He was throwing in the mid 80s when he was 15 years old. His father read Nolan Ryan's pitching Bible. Started playing long toss with him before and after games. Things continued to progress very well in the early stages of his career. Wound up as a first round pick. The signing bonus of over a million dollars. Curveball got him out of trouble here in the third inning. Strikeout number five. There was not much going, but Michael Bourne walked and Clint Barmas with a single. RBI double pinch, two on a single lead, 5 3 Dodgers now.
five of their runs on long balls. Jay Gibbons comes up here in the fourth inning. He provided a two out homer in the second inning, a solo shot. Nice looking hat. Yeah, this is a, this is a good hat era, Brownie. Is that what's going on? Yeah, there's a lot of good hats. Into a new era and didn't realize it. Don't you hate that when you miss <laughs> the beginning of an era? You strike one to Gibbons. Do you ever know? Do you know if you're in a golden era? No. I mean, kind of, you don't know until it's afterwards, right? That's right. Right. That was a golden era. This is the golden era of hats. And you can't enjoy it. Didn't know it was there. One ball, one strike. That was a quality chapeau. Foul ball makes it a one ball, two strike count. For whatever reason, left handed hitters have been problematic for Jay Happ so far this year. They carried a 355 batting average into this game. Part of the explanation is probably the fact that a lot of weak hitting lefties sit down against a left handed pitcher. Two and two. Jay shooting for win number four of a year. He had that rough third inning, so he'd love to come back and have a quick fourth. Yeah, well, the fact that the Astros put those runs on the board, that kind of gives you new life. So, okay, I'm back in this game. Mm -hmm. Strike three call. Number three. That's one good way to neutralize a lefty. Just drop that curveball over the outside corner. Time for our AT&T trivia question du jour. By winning percentage, who are the top five Astro managers of all time? Now, this is not a trick question. There are none of those people that manage three games in this list. Okay. And I know you know number one, but uh, do you know the order? Uh, that's going to be tough. It's going to be really tough. Aaron Miles looks at ball one. Larry Durker would be number one. That's correct. Durker, Verdon, Garner. Okay. Now we're in some trouble here. One of your two was correct. Mm. In other words, you get two out of three. Yeah, well, Verdon would be number two, right? That would be wrong. Okay. Right. Good. A winning percentage, not total wins. Winning percentage, yeah. Oh, Hallam here? He's in the list. No, uh, let me give you one clue. All right. The era that is about to end here at Minute Maid Park in a few weeks had four of them. The Drake McLean era. Yeah. Jimmy Williams. That is correct. Ah. Michael Bourne back in left center field. Takes care of out number two off the bat of Aaron Miles. And it's Billingsley next. Yeah, because they didn't do a whole lot of winning in the early days. So. Right. Not going to be Grady Hatton or any of those guys. No. How about Coop? All right. No. There's another good one. No. no. Uh, he, so, is he is managing in the league right now. Who did we forget? Artie? No. Number two. Time oh, mm. what, that's a mistake. I Terry can't Collins. ring the bell on no. that. You got one that missed Terry Collins. He's number oh, two in yeah. winning percentage. Very yeah. good. Only, only, uh, only Hallinier was not here during the Drake McLean era. Terry's busy putting out fires in New York right oh now. Oh boy, there are a few forest fires. With the article coming out with the owner Fred Wilpon. Not so complimentary about some of the Mets players. One ball, one strike. It's a story in the New Yorker coming out and one in Sports Illustrated apparently, or maybe a Sports Illustrated article that quotes the New Yorker story. Fred Wilpon. <laughs> you know. I think he called himself a schmuck for signing Beltron. Yes. Yes. And he said, no way is Jose Reyes getting Carl Crawford money, which is probably legit. Yeah. It's interesting, though, most of the comments you hear from players are still supportive of Wilpon. Most of the Met players say, hey, that's just, uh -huh. that's not Fred. He's going through a tough time right now. Well, he is. He's trying to sell a pretty sizable percentage of his club because of all the debts. Fouled away. Still two and two. And apparently the latest from the Los Angeles soap opera is that Frank McCourt, the owner of the Dodgers, is going to be sued for millions of dollars uh, by the family of the man who was injured, Mr. Stowe, uh, was beaten in the parking lot. That's a $50 million lawsuit, I believe I heard today. And 
some of the insiders with the Dodgers think that they will barely be able to make payroll by the end of this month. But after that, good luck. Swing and a miss. Billingsley. Strike that victim number four for Jay Happ. It's five to three, Dodgers. Here at Houston in the bottom of the fourth inning it'll be Johnson Hall and Quintero from Minute Maid Park in Houston Texas. There's the Tuesday night crowd it'll be a Wednesday afternoon crowd in a few hours. Renee Rodriguez and Ted Lilly tomorrow with a 105 start. Astros live comes your way at 1230. Johnson struck out looking earlier. Day game tomorrow that means we're going to play at least 14 innings here tonight. Yeah. Seems to be the way it happens, doesn't it? So settle in. What does that mean? Settle in. I don't know. <laughs> it's like you're obligated to stay. <laughs> you don't have to settle in. You can watch Glee. I don't care. Sink down. Brownie and I are going to gonna be here. <laughs> we are looking for a sign that says "Love Lady" somewhere here in the stands. Have not been able to find it. My curiosity has peaked. Marty Cunningham lives in Phoenix, and her 96-year-old mother is from Lovelady, Texas, and is now living with her, make it Tucson rather. And uh, she has some friends who are going to be at the game tonight. Two balls, two strikes. They're sitting somewhere up high behind home plate. There's a happy birthday, John. Will that work? But no Lovelady sign tonight. We tried, Marty. Still looking. Tap to third base. Miles. Low throw, and Loney saves him a throwing error. <laughs> Miles got so out of whack with his footwork, he just started running. <laughs> he got a traveling violation. Yeah, he took On Aaron Miles. Yeah. Mindy Rudolph. Me. Calling that one. I was just trying to get trying to get the handle. He couldn't get the handle. It's well done by Loney to go down on a knee. We gripped the second time, got enough of it where he could get it started in the right direction anyway. Bill Hall's the batter. Looking at strike one. He struck out in the second inning. He was locked in last night. Could have hit Walter Johnson last night. <laughs> it's a one ball, one strike count. Four for four. Two doubles. He really was. He was right on it.
his playing time had suffered, but he said in the interview on Astros Live post game show, he's been doing a lot of work on his hitting with hitting coach Mike Barnett, and he felt that he had closed himself off and needed to open up a little bit so he could see the ball better. He didn't think that his back eye, I don't think, was working too well for him from the sounds of it anyway, JD. This one into right field. And a running catch by Sands. Two outs. Well, well, yeah, if, you, if you can't see, that's a problem for a hitter. You're not seeing the ball well. Hit that ball. Fine. Just couldn't find a hole for him. Quintero, who hit a fly ball to right, comes around for the second time. Rick Monday will be our guest tomorrow on Astros Live at 12:30. Annual June baseball amateur free agent draft is coming up June 6th. And we'll talk about that. He is so good. Good broadcaster. You know, he's had so many memorable times and he's had a fantastic career, but he's known primarily for two things by many baseball fans. He was the first player drafted in the first ever draft, 1965, and then for saving the American flag from those flag burners in the outfield. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, yeah, let's take a look at the numbers. He was a very good player for a very long time. He really was. He tells some interesting tales about that first ever draft tomorrow, 12:30. He was at Arizona State and he got the news. Well, he was at the College World Series playing for Arizona State. Quintero didn't think so, and Mike Estabrook says it's strike three for a one-two-three fourth inning for Billingsley with the Dodgers up five to three. Baseball on Fox Sports Houston is brought to you by AT&T. Rethink Possible. By Jack in the Box, where you can get anything on the menu, any time of day. And by Steel, for dependable trimmers and lightweight blowers, visit steeldealers.com. Action moves ahead. We move upstairs to Bill Brown and Jim Deshaies. Thank you, Greg Lucas, here at Minute Maid Park. It is 5-3, the Dodgers. Got four in the third inning on their first grand slam of the year that came off the bat of Jerry Sands. Earlier they had a solo homer from Jay Gibbons. It was the first grand slam the Astros had allowed since near the end of last season. When Aramis Ramirez of the Cubs connected against them. So Jay Happ, after that costly error prior to the Sands homer, allowing Kemp to reach, now has regrouped. He had a one, two, three, fourth. It's Rafael for call leading off the fifth, 0 for 2. There's strike one for call. Grounded out to short in the first, and by Patty Smith's writing, he again grounded out to short in the third. <laughs> Off the end of the bat, it loops out to Michael Bourne, sending him back. Deeper drive than it appeared it would be. One out. Isn't that where she could have gotten by with the old Phil Rizzuto scorecard entry WW? Yeah. Wasn't watching. Wasn't, wasn't watching. 
Who was it that tells that story? Bill White or one White. of his partners? <laughs> Scooter, what is WW on your scorebook? <laughs> I wasn't watching. White. They worked together about 20 years, and he never called him by his first name. No. White. Jamie Carroll. Receiver. When he worked receiver, he was receiver. <laughs> Huckleberry. Yeah. Very popular in New York. Phil Rizzuto. They strike one. Carroll hit a fly ball. Left field, and he drew a walk. I was a kid. We got Yankee games on WPIX, and uh, I thought Holy Cow was Phil Rizzuto's. I never knew about Harry Carey and Holy Cow. Okay. <laughs> one ball, one strike. Red Sox four, Indians one. Bottom of the seventh. Jason Veritek just hit his first homer for Boston. It's a two and one count. Kansas City leads Baltimore three to two after six. Atlanta to Pittsburgh nothing bottom of the eighth in Pittsburgh Johnny Venters in the game in relief now. Well, that was Jurgens and Charlie Morton. Yeah. Both of them having outstanding years. Boy Jurgens had carried an ERA below two into that start. Mm. We didn't see him in Atlanta. But, uh, part of that outstanding rotation. Probably see him here with a four game series in June. Barmas to his left. Takes care of that second out. Yeah, if you picked uh, Jared Jurgens on your fantasy team uh, this spring, you're feeling pretty good about things. He's got an ERA of 1.56. He went seven and two thirds scoreless tonight. I believe he, I believe he will be six and one if he gets that win. James Loney walked in the first. Patty Smith has him down for a single in the third. Patty kept a nice neat scorecard. How come you keep saying Patty has him down like you don't trust what I actually wrote? I wasn't watching. <laughs> Just so the reading. WW comes from you. <laughs> Just reading what you wrote down. How did I do? You did great. I, I mean, I, I forgot after I came back here, I forgot I didn't use the red pen on the no, single. You're, you're fine. I'm sure you'll go over it with your marker. It's already been done, but okay. you did a wonderful job. And he's up here with White out going crazy. <laughs> he probably ripped out the whole page and started over. No, no, you did fine, Patty. Really. Two balls and a strike. We're thinking about taking this a little further. We'll have one of those executive planning sessions and see what we can do about that. I think we should. Well, we'll be fired later on tonight. Two balls and two strikes. I already got the call. <laughs> Tell me, Patty, how many grand slams have you called for the visiting team at Minute Maid Park? Well, I, I think it, it's kind of like when you win, everything is fine, you know? Uh -huh. So because I'm in the booth and a grand slam happens, all of a sudden it's not such a great idea. So I, I've only called one, and I'm afraid it might be my last. <laughs> Chris Johnson waiting. That's a foul pop to end the fifth inning. Jay Happ has retired seven in a row since Patty called that grand slam, and it is five to three, Dodgers.
Doing more in defense features brought to you by the Home Depot. There's Michael Bourne with a fabulous diving catch on the line drive hit in the first inning by Matt Kemp. We have a pinch hitter now in the bottom of the fifth for the Astros. It's Matt Downs coming up. Batting for Jay Happ. Mario Del Rosario is working in the bullpen. Happ leaving the game after five innings of work. Alongside Brad Arnsberg watching Downs hit for him. And there is strike one. Downs a 264 hitter in 53 at bats has three homers 11 runs batted in. As a pinch hitter he's done well three for eight one homer two runs driven in. A big home run in Atlanta. Bounce slowly to shortstop Rafael for call. Oh no. Jay half through 93 pitches tonight probably had uh, a little more in him but. I think that's the key a little more. You know, Brad Mills, Brad Arnsberg probably thought they'd only get one more out of him with that pitch count up at 93. So with the opportunity to pinch it here to try to get something going. Now it's Michael Bourne. He worked the count full, hit a fly ball to left the first, then he walked on another full count in the third inning. That's strike one to Michael with Clint Barmas on deck. Astros have four hits. The Dodgers have five runs on three hits. Saw the pitching line on Jay Happ giving up just one earned run in five innings, four unearned tallies. The Astros have now allowed 27 unearned runs this year, very high number compared to the other teams. Cap foul, very difficult to overcome a game in which a team allows four unearned runs. Yeah, and, and there's all kinds of statistics of baseball. And teams winning, uh, if they score first, they win this percentage of time. I wonder what the record of the winning percentage of a team in Major League Baseball is when they hit a grand slam. Ooh. That's strikeout number seven. Good question. But they win. 90% of the time is that too big of a number it might be too big but it should be really high. Clint Barma single to left and he came around to score in the third inning Clint's one for two Hunter Pence on deck. Clint gets on Hunter represents the potential tying run here in the fifth. Out of the way. Of the Astros last 12 games eight have been decided by two runs or less. Tampa Bay six Detroit five bottom of the seventh in Detroit. Miguel Cabrera hit his ninth. Over two. Bottom line of regardless of how anybody has scored their runs the fact is the Astros trail by just two here. The Dodgers bullpen has been somewhat shaky. We saw that last night. Astros have been a better hitting team at home with a team batting average of 276 in this ballpark. There's a strikeout. That's number eight for Billingsley, and that ends the fifth with the score of five to three Dodgers.
Sports Houston is brought to you by Gullo, treating you like family. Speaking of family, we had a marriage proposal just moments ago. That's what the crowd reaction is in the background. And apparently, yeah. she said yes. Yeah, Juan right there. Miss her name. Well, he's capitalizing on the Hunter Pence hot streak this season by wearing a Pence jersey, and that brought him some very good yeah. karma. And Ariel Del Rosario is warming up as ERA is four with no decisions so far. Another clutch hit for Hunter with runners in scoring position. <laughs> EDR. EDR has been a nice roll, Brownie. Yeah, lately he has, and uh, he's been getting the ball down well. Steve Sparks, meanwhile, has something to offer tonight. Sparks. Hey, guys, we just saw a uh, proposal down yeah. the right field line. I just saw my daughter on kiss cam on the jumbo screen kiss a boy for the first time. No way. That wasn't cool. That should not be loud <laughs> with the father watching. No. She's 27 though. Oh well that's a little different. There's ball one two camp and uh, camp is over two. How did that strike you Sparky wasn't that very shocking. You know what I was watching it intently. I was just hoping those two wouldn't be on the screen and lo and behold I was just getting about 27. She's 17 and. Just saw my daughter uh, kiss a guy. Well, I mean, put her on kiss cam. She has no choice. That's pressure, Sparky. He's got a choice. <laughs> he might have one choice only from the sounds of things. <laughs> one ball, two strikes. Uh, you are in so much trouble, pal. <laughs> Your daughter's going to hear about you talking about this. Yes, and she you is. Toast. It's the last time he eats at my house. <laughs> And a miss. And there's some good action from Del Rosario for a strikeout. Nice movement. Jay Happ retired seven Dodgers in a row at the end of his five innings. Tough to make contact with a pitch moving in that direction. Bullpen has combined for 15 innings and one earned run allowed since May 17th. Jerry Sands hit the grand slam last time up. Who strike one? It's, you know, the nature of the Astros bullpen. It's a, it's a work in progress. You've got a lot of young guys out there. Less than a year's service in the major leagues. There's Johnson. Two outs. It's been a challenge for Brad Mills too as he tries to sort his way through some of these late inning games. Who to give the ball to and. Yeah, you know, you start to gain trust in the guy, and then man, he gives it up, so you give the ball to somebody else. And it's, a, it's a year of discovery in many ways, and bullpen a big part of it. A lot of young arms out there, but some, certainly some talented guys. Deanna Navarro's 0 for two. Navarro looks at ball one. Del Rosario coming from Cincinnati. And lately he's been in games like this, sixth inning or so. Two and oh. Oh yeah, and this is this is an area where the Astros bullpen earlier this year really struggled. We focused, of course, on those late inning games where you give up leads, but they had a number of games where they were down just a couple in the middle innings, and the other club was able to exploit the middle relievers and, and, and really open it up. Doesn't get as much notice when as when you blow a lead late. Navarro now getting all over Astro. Mm. Q wasn't happy with him. Is that bad either? A little shake up in the mask wearing union tonight. <laughs> a little tap goes out to Clint Varmus. It's quick in the sixth inning. Del Rosario who's had a eight straight scoreless outings. Gets a score of sixth inning to keep it at 5 3 dogs.
6. And hey, baseball fans, Chevy is proud to support youth baseball leagues in your local community. If you would like to learn more about Chevy youth baseball programs, go to youthsportswired.com. Bill Brown. Those kids are not wired. They're just ready for an Astros rally here in the bottom of the sixth, Patty. It's 5 to 3 still, as you mentioned. Hunter Pence has one of those four Houston hits and an RBI on a double up the right field line. This one goes to right center. That may shoot the gap. Extra bases again for Hunter Pence. He heads for second. A leadoff double. Second double of the night. 15th of the year. On that last double, I said he wasn't really trying to go that way. He just kind of fought off an inside pitch. This time, he got a fastball out away from him, and as he has done so many times this year, just drove it into that alley in right center. Billingsley's had a lot of success the last couple innings powering that fastball by Astro hitters, but Pence jumped all over that one. Now he's in scoring position for Carlos Lee. Lee sent him home with a two run single in the third. Carlos one for two. Wallace on deck as the Astros try to stir it up against Billingsley. That's upstairs, ball one. Now Billingsley, who had that big five to nothing lead. Is staring at the potential tying run with nobody out. Batting average against Chad coming into this game was 223. 2 and 0, and Carlos once again works his way into a favorable count. That's similar to that third inning when you know Billingsley lost his aggressiveness as the Astros started to put some hits together. He started to work out of the zone. See what he does here with Carlos last time on 2 0. He threw him a slider. Fast ball up, and it's 3 0. He should have thrown him a slider there, too, because he overthrew the fastball. He didn't trust his fastball enough to beat him in the strike zone. Everybody would be assuming green light here for Carlos. And it's up to him to make that decision. He's a 303 career hitter against the Dodgers. Ball four, nowhere close. Two men on. And that's walk number two with nobody out. It's Brett Wallace. The way the Astros came back last night, very unusual. Now they've started that comeback in the third inning tonight with a chance to further it here in the sixth. Rick Honeycutt, the pitching coach, comes out. Brett Wallace doubled inside third base in the second inning. He struck out in third. Had a fastball down the third base line for his double. That Billingsley got him last time. A nasty breaking ball to finish him off. Billingsley has good breaking stuff, but tonight it has been kind of inconsistent for him. Snapped off a couple of good ones, but he's also struggled with that pitch. Eighty three pitches for Billingsley. Brad Mills last night wanted to get Clayton Kershaw out of the game. And he ordered an intentional walk to Russ Mitchell in the seventh and Kershaw was lifted. That was a one one game at that time and they got a three one lead. Mike McDougal is warming up right now. Chris Johnson on deck. That's ball one. You know this sport is so fantastic for discussing afterwards the moves in a game and last night was one of those. There were so many strategy questions during the manager's session with the media. Brad Mills carefully went over all those answers. They were well thought out. Yeah, well that's the thing about baseball. I remember people used to they talk about Phil Garner and he's managing like he's, his pants are on fire that you know everything guard did there was a solid reason behind it. And, and the same with Brad Mills. I mean, he's, you don't get these jobs off knowing what you're doing No. Wallace takes a look at it. It's three and oh now. And uh, last night. You know, the point was behind the intentional walk with Brad Mills. The Dodgers didn't have anybody warming up at that time, and he was pretty sure Kershaw was going to hit. Then, when Ethier came out to pinch hit, they did get McDougal warmed up. 
Now the bases are loaded after another walk. So they take straight balls. And Johnson bats. McDougal got ready pretty quickly last night. And now as he warms up, it's Chris Johnson who struck out looking and grounded out the third. Billings has been trying to get Astros to get themselves out after that Pence double first Lee and Wallace. And neither one of them would oblige. And now the same challenge falls to Chris Johnson. You don't want to take away a hitter's aggressiveness in this situation, especially a guy like CJ who can put the ball out of the ballpark. He should be looking for a pitch here much like he would be if he was up there 2 0 3 1. Look at the one pitch he can juice. That wasn't it. No, it wasn't. Just a little get over breaking ball. And he's sitting dead red there, probably. Chris this year with runners in scoring position and less than two outs is 10 for 19. Collins Lewis allowed one grand slam. Fouled in a toe and two now with Bill Hall on deck. Might have noticed Chris's high batting average with the base loaded as an insulation home plate. He's two for two this year. Well, the Astros certainly expect to get something on the board here. Base is loaded, nobody out. So this becomes a really interesting time of this game after they trail 5 0 in the third. And coming out of this inning, anything less than tied would be a significant blow. Billingsley is a strikeout pitcher. That's the challenge now for CJ with two strikes. He has struck out eight tonight. Last year, Billingsley struck out 171 in 191 innings. Crowd is into it. To center field. Kemp settling in. Pence tagging. Lee is tagging. And the throw goes toward third. It's five to four on a sacrifice fly by Johnson. Nice job on an 0-2 pitch to get it deep enough to get the run home. Billingsley got away with murder right there. That was not a good 0-2 pitch. That's throw 0-2 breaking ball there. You want to bury it. Don't leave it in the strike zone. That thing was belly button high. Now Kemp alertly through to third that keeps Carlos Lee at second base. Five to four game RBI number 23 for CJ. Bill Hall 0 for 2. Hit the ball well lining out the right field in the fourth. Just a guess but I think there was some counseling going on there for, <laughs> for CJ from Mike Barnett. Looked like Something it. along the lines of CJ probably saying I should have killed that pitch. Mm -hmm. And Barney said hey you got the job done you got the man home. That's the whole thing. It's only the sixth inning. And they have cut into this lead. Five nothing now. Down to five four. And Bill Hall will try to produce with Quintero on deck. Chases that one and it's a one one count. Told you we're going to play 14 innings. Yeah, you were on it. Be here till two in the morning. Day game tomorrow. That's a lock. Hall drove in 46 last year for Boston in 344 at bats. Pop up goes back and out of play for DeAndre Navarro. Red Sox four, Indians one. They go to the ninth inning in Cleveland. And the Indians are fabulous at home. Jay Krasinski's in the ballpark. Yes, he is. And he can catch. This there you season, go. how about that? Teams are 17 and 0 in hitting a grand slam. Maybe you're right. Maybe it is 90 percent or more. Somebody's due to lose one. <laughs> Hall is down on strikes. Two outs. That's nine strikeouts. And Quintero follows. 
kind of what I was talking about earlier with Billingsley is his breaking ball has been dynamite at times other times a little flat but that was a good one. Quintero will try for the two out lift. And you, got, you just feel like you should come out of this with more than one. Mm -hmm. Brian Bogusevic is on deck. Del Rosario do up next. Action in the Astros bullpen. There's ball one. Who doesn't walk much, but got to be patient here. Chased a high fastball to strike out last time. Wilton Lopez is warming up. It's one and one. Billingsley closing in on 100 pitches as Lopez works. Jair Jurgens is now six and one. Atlanta shut out Pittsburgh two to nothing. Greg Kimbrell got saved number 13 with the loss being charged to Charlie Morton. He's five and two. Dean Terrell. Now is at one and two in the count. Billingsley trying to hold on to the lead. Lost his last start three to one. Against San Francisco he went six innings in that one. And he threw 108 pitches. He's thrown as many as 119 this year and then 118 in another. Punch foul. Billingsley's due up third in the Dodgers seven. That fastball down where Q can handle it out away from him. I suspect he'll take a shot way up with the fastball or maybe try to bounce a breaking ball. Got good life on that four seamer. When he gets to home plate. In the air and the first baseman Loney goes up the right field line in foul ground to end the Astros six. They settle for one run after loading the bases with nobody out. One hit, two men left, five four Dodgers after six. You buy Whataburger just like you like it. Buy your local Texas Ford dealers. And buy Southwest Airlines new rapid rewards, unlimited reward seats, and no blackout dates. The Astros have closed it within a run. Del Rosario, who had a perfect first inning in relief, will be out there again and all in the action, Bill Brown and Jim Deshaies. That's right, Greg. And with this now one run ball game, if Del Rosario can do what he did in the sixth inning, the Astros then can pitch hit for him 
as he's due to lead off the bottom half. So this is a critical time of this game for the Astros. They've sliced four runs off that five run lead. Del Rosario had the one two three sixth inning. Ten straight Dodgers have been retired since Patty Smith called that grand slam by Sands in the third inning. <laughs> Jay Givens homered earlier in a non Patty Smith call. There is strike one. It was it was a reluctant grand slam call. <laughs> yeah. She was squirming. Something tells me I'm not going to live this grand slam down for a very long time. You may not. But still it was fun wasn't it. It was but I think you're getting much more enjoyment out of the fact that it didn't happen on your watch. <laughs> You might be right with that. Two balls and a strike. You really work hard though to climb these uh, steps and interview these fans here. You know, you're saying that to be nice because you look like you were lounging up there, thoroughly enjoying yourself. Well, the food was good. The company was wonderful. It was a different view of the game. There was nothing not to like about it. It wasn't drudgery in any way, Patty. It's absolutely not. I love getting out there with the fans, showing off the ballpark. The fans seem to enjoy it. So, um, you know, it's nice to change it up every while, every once in a while, and we all get to see what each other does. Yeah, that's right. I have a much greater appreciation for what you do, having to endure Jim Deshays. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's the tough part of it. Here's the thing J.D. wants to do. He wants to do Kevin's job and host Astros Live pre- and post-game shows. I can probably make that happen. <laughs> I'm going to do Greg's job and ring the bell. Yeah. <laughs> we all want Greg's job. <laughs> Steve Sparks is eyeing something different as well. Swing and a miss with good movement there. Del Rosario gets a second strikeout. I think Sparky's job uh, is entails something to do with uh, the removal of a kissing boyfriend. Yeah, he's well, monitoring I want to be a case. bouncer. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and a ticket taker. Is that is that young man counting on you for a ride home tonight? No, but he got free tickets to the game oh, mm. for the last time. <laughs> <laughs> Russ Mitchell's on deck, and the batter's Aaron Miles. Bill, did you ever want to do anything else besides what you're doing now? Not really. How about you? No, not really. I literally kind of knew when I was about 10 years old this is what I wanted to do. Oh. Wow. Chris Johnson's in tight at third. That's a strike. You know, it's one of them. Del Rosario tonight, and you know I, I, we talked when he first came in. He's been on a nice roll lately. I just, I just like his his mound presence. He's very confident out there the way he's going about it. Maybe I'm just you know projecting that because he's pitching well, but a whole lot of time between pitches. It's a pretty good idea what he's trying to do. He's got that great movement, so he doesn't really have to. Do a lot in terms of trying to set up hitter. Just throw that good, that good sinker. Chop the shortstop. Farmer's charging, throwing in the run. Two outs. He has five straight outs since he came in. Yeah, hasn't given up a ball out of the infield. Three ground balls and a couple of punch outs. We get you caught up on a five to four ball game. The Dodgers took a one nothing lead on a Givens homer in the second inning. As he took it out to right field on Jay Happ. And then the grand slam for Jerry Sands in the third inning made it 5 nothing Dodgers. The Astros jumped right in in the home third inning. Hunter Pence with an RBI double. Two run single Carlos Lee cut the lead to 5-3. And then a sack fly by Johnson in the sixth inning. With the bases loaded, nobody out. The Astros getting one run out of that to make it 5-4. Now here's Del Rosario against the pinch hitter, Russ Mitchell. Batting for Billingsley, he takes ball one. Billingsley in six innings tonight allowed the Astros five hits, four runs. He walked three and fanned nine. McDougal has been warming up. Mitchell takes a strike and it's one and one. Good tight breaking ball by Anario. Mitchell last night was 0 for 3 and drew that intentional walk in the seventh inning. Line drive left field corner for Mitchell. He heads for second base. Carlos Lee to pick it up. Pinch double for Mitchell. 12 straight Dodgers had been retired. First double of Russ Mitchell's career. Uh, 
ball just stayed up for him a little bit. He was, looked like he was out in front, but he was able to hook it down the line for that double. An RBI opportunity for for call. We'll see now how Del Rosario does with the man in scoring position. For calls 0 for 3. Ball one. You trust that stuff to stay on the plate. He, he's been on the plate with good sync through his first six hitters. The Dodgers have been hitting 213 with runners in scoring position coming into this game. Punch to left field. Carlos Lee is there. Mm, down on a knee. Battling the lights, it would appear. No runs a hit, and a man stranded. Seventh inning stretch time finds us looking at a one run ball game. 5 4 Dodgers. Enjoying deep in the heart of Texas. And while they're in that moment of enjoyment, there's a pitcher warming up. And he is all business. Mike McDougal, it comes in with a one run lead. Bottom of the seventh inning coming, and it's going to be Brian Bogusevic to pinch it for Anario Del Rosario as we look at McDougal's season so far. Yeah, he's uh, having a nice year. The veteran right hander has worked 20 times, and he's got a 169 ERA. Corolla sitting last night allowed a hit. Rushing that heater up there at 95 miles an hour. The uh, bullpen has not been very good for the Dodgers this year. Had some injury problems. They've had some performance issues. McDougal last night pitched the seventh inning. He gave up a leadoff single to Bill Hall, but then got a double play ball on Quintero. And he retired. The man he's facing right now, Bogusavic, last night on a grounder to shortstop. There's strike one. Yeah, straight butter, 96 miles an hour. Four for 15. Brian Bogusavic has a pinch hitter. He got a couple of starts over the weekend in Toronto. It's 0 and 2 to Brian. This is the 15th game in a row Brian has played in, but. Usually it's rolls like this. It's an amazing playing streak for a guy who's a pinch hitter most of the time. Backhanded for call. He braces and throws low to Loney, but Loney dug it out. One out. Good glove man at first. Michael Bourne. He is over two with a walk. Dodgers called up a young right hander today. Here's that play at first. Bourne shoots one foul. There's strike one. 
They called up Ruby De La Rosa. And they designated Lance Cormier for assignment before this game. Making the bullpen change. McDougal could close. He has a save this year. Been a closer in the past. He was an all star with Kansas City back in 2003. It almost hurts to watch him pitch, boy. He puts a lot of effort into it. I think his arm is going to fly off. Last year he pitched 25 games with St. Louis. He's 34 now. Mike was a first round pick of Kansas City in 99. It's one and two. Who is that? That is not your daughter, is it, Sparky? Unfortunately. Have you ever seen a wanted poster? <laughs> yeah. In a post office? <laughs> in fact. That's it's going to be my my picture and his both. So if Steve is missing from the post game show, we'll understand tonight. Strikeout number 10 for Dodger pitchers. All of his pitches have been at 95 since he came in. That's consistent heat. Glenn Barmas is one for three, a single a run scored in the third. Breaking pitch. Strike for McDougal. Last year in St. Louis, the Astros handed McDougal a loss. Came in with a 4 2 lead in the eighth inning. And they went to work on it. I don't think that herky jerky motion makes it tough, too, for a hitter. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there are a lot of guys we talk about that are hard throwers. Other guys are deceptive. This guy's both. He's got that funky delivery, plus he's throwing 96 miles an hour. In the dirt and he gets a strikeout on a breaking pitch. Navarro throwing to complete the strikeout. And that's the seventh inning quickly for the lanky McDougal. He preserves his club's 5-4 lead through seven. First faith and family night of 2011. The Astros host the Diamondbacks at 6:05, and after the game, fans can enjoy a free post-game concert with contemporary Christian artist Jeremy Camp. Tickets start only seven dollars. You can visit Astros.com tonight and get more information. Well, we got a new pitcher, and we got Bill Brown upstairs. Bill Brown and Jim Deshays both commiserating with Sparky. They all had daughters. Yes. I had a son, uh, so I have a son, so I don't have that same feeling, I guess. No worries for you. No, no. You're on easy street, pal. <laughs> Sergio Escalona comes in. He's pitcher number three. Nice job by Enario Del Rosario with a couple of scoreless innings, giving up a hit, no walks, two strikeouts. Escalona has an ERA of three, and he's been in six games already. Got Jamie Carroll, and then left-handed hitting James Loney, and then. Matt Kemp. We'll see how long Brad Mills decides to stay with his lefty. Obviously through Loney. 
Last three outings for him have been one third of an inning. Ruby De La Rosa is warming up for the Dodgers after just arriving from Triple A. There's ball one to Carroll. Carroll 0 for two with a walk and a run score. And this is about saving resources. If you brought a righty in to face Carroll, then you bring Escalona in to face Loney, so you have to use two pitchers. And uh, when you're down in the game, you really don't want to do that. It's one thing if you're preserving a lead. And you feel like Escalona is capable of getting a right-handed hitter out. Carroll's not a home run hitter. First game Escalona pitched as that strike two as an Astro was against Cincinnati here two weeks ago and he walked the only man he faced Jay Bruce who later came around to score so that run was charged to him. And that's been it. He's pitched a scoreless ball in the next five outings. It's a one two count two two now for Escalona. Who was in the big leagues briefly with the Phillies in 09. In, uh, in an article a while back he said he got kind of lazy. And he's been in the minor leagues. The last couple of years. Three balls two strikes last year he was a double a Redding with a four and eight record a three point eight one ERA. Astros picked him up in a trade in January. That's one of those cliches that you hear all the time in, in the minor leagues as you're coming up through. It's easier to get to the big leagues than it is to stay in the big leagues. That's the challenge. A lot of guys get there, but can you hang on? Mm -hmm. That is strike three. Jamie Carroll looks back. A lot of folks unhappy with Mike Estabrook tonight. Look pretty good from my point of view. Look great to Escalona and Quintero. It's kind of a right-handed uh, hitting Brett Butler, isn't he? Mm -hmm. Jamie Carroll. Yeah. Like Butler. Sure does. Loney has a good game going. A walk, a single. He's fouled out. He's made some good plays at first. Strike one to James. CC Sabathia and the Yankees beat Toronto tonight at Yankee Stadium 5 to 4 with two in the bottom of the ninth. They beat Frank Francisco. The guy the Astros beat a few days ago. No balls, two strikes. That spoiled a good night for Ricky Romero. The Toronto starter gave up one run in seven innings. Foul ball keeps it at no balls, two strikes. James Loney from the fertile baseball developmental area of Houston. First round pick after going to Elkins High School. He was the 19th player drafted in 02. Well, the draft rooms are getting busy now. Just a couple of weeks until draft day. Swing and a miss and a strikeout. Escalona gets two in a row. Our Jaguar performance play is coming your way next. See what drives in. Gary Sands takes that pitch a long way for his first grand slam. That made it five to nothing, Dodgers. Back in inning number three. Now Brad Mills is on his way to the hill. And with Kemp coming up next, Mills will take the ball from Escalona. With the score five to four Dodgers.
Always does this. A full out sprint from the bullpen to the mound. Yeah, chugging hard. Uh, Craig Lefferts. The first guy I saw do that. Remember Lefferts? Yeah, he, he did that. Make that sprint. That's right. He's probably not the first, but it's the guy I remember. Can't remember uh, anybody before him. A lot of guys like to, to stroll in. Something well, like the jog. And then go further back, they used to have bullpen cars. These are the golf carts bring guys in. True. Haven't seen those in a while. Matt Kemp is in the box. He's 0 for 3. Lopez with a 2.76 ERA, 1 and 1. Last time out in Toronto, he was going along nicely and then he started to elevate the ball. That's the game where Brad Mills made the mid at bat pitching change, took Lopez out, brought Melanson in to finish it out. It worked out for him. One ball, one strike. Lopez in that game Sunday got a hold. He went an inning and a third. Didn't give up a hit or a run, but he did walk to, and that was of concern to Brad Mills. The pitches were upstairs. It was at that critical time in the game with a 3 to 2 lead that he made the change, bringing in Melanson on a 2 1 count. One ball, two strikes, a very proactive pitching change, but extremely understandable. I was nervous that maybe he was hurt a little bit. He had the yeah. elbow problem earlier this year, so it's nice to see him come back throwing the ball well tonight. Sure is. And he strikes out Kemp for a key out to keep this game five to four Dodgers in the middle of the eighth. Fan of the game. Win and left. Hands of the game comes on this fan catch. Ooh, nice glove extension. He's got good glove side command. Oh, he does. That was early in the game. Now it's a two managerial change, but not a double switch. It's uh, Tony Gwynn Jr. coming in in left field and Ruby De La Rosa on the mound. So Gwynn, the talented defensive player in left. Places Jay Gibbons there. Gibbons was one for three with a homer, and De La Rosa up from Double A Chattanooga, where he was two and two with a 2.93 ERA, is making his major league debut. And Don Mattingly, very trusting of this young right-hander, bringing him in in the eighth inning with a one-run lead. Yeah, well, he's either very trusting or very desperate. <laughs> uh, they have had bullpen problems, but this is a philosophy a lot of managers say. You know, all right, we need a guy to. To pitch late in games and hold leads for us. Well, we got a kid down at double A we really like. We're going to send you him. All right, well, let's throw him out in the fire and see what he can do. Last year, De La Rosa was named the Dodgers Branch Rickey Minor League Pitcher of the Year. Signed as a free agent in 07. 10 and 9 in his career in the minors. Hunter Pence, the first man to face him. He has a pair of doubles tonight. He's driven in a run and he scored two. De La Rosa, just 22 years old from the Dominican. Sinker goes for ball one. 
Mike McDougal had a one two three seventh inning with two strikeouts. It's a ninety five mile an hour sinker right Ooh, there. No wonder he's in the big leagues. One ball one strike. Dodger relievers have a four point nine nine ERA. That's the highest in the league. Thirteen saves and sixteen opportunities. De La Rosa was at Great Lakes and Chattanooga last year. Two and one. We go to Greg Lucas. Well, you know, we're having major storms in Oklahoma and as far as North Texas, and according to a report we have in Arlington where the Rangers are playing in a rain delay, they're moving the fans from the lower bowl into the tunnels through the dugouts because of storm warnings. Ooh. Two balls, two yeah, strikes. They've been in that rain delay quite a while up there. They're in the southern southern portion of a really bad stretch of weather going through Oklahoma. After the tornadoes in Joplin, Missouri. Yeah, more tornado warnings today. Three and two now. De La Rosa working through his first major league batter. Gets it to a full count. Not time to see who wins this confrontation. You gotta believe he's gonna throw that sinker. Elevated a little bit. That and a straight gas. Big strikeout night for Dodger pitching. That's number 13. Astros have seen some talented young arms of late. Hanson, Morrow, Graybeck, Kershaw, Billingsley. And now this kid, Ruby with two B's. De La Rosa. Carlos lead off the middle with a two run single in the third. He is one for two with a walk. Breaking pitch is up. There's ball one. Kenley Jansen had to work very hard in last night's game. He only got two outs. He gave up three hits and three runs. 38 pitches. Broken bat roller out the shortstop. For Paul. Bad throw, but there's the tag by Loney. For Paul took extra time, but the throw still got away and. Loney saved him an error and made the tag on Lee for out number two. I think sometimes the infielders take extra time. They get out of their rhythm a little bit and they feel like they have a little extra time and, they, and their mechanics suffer. And that is a great example of it there. Instead of you know, just going through and making a good solid throw, he got back on his heels and boosted a little bit. And only Loney clearly able to apply that tag to Carlos before he got to the bag. Two outs and it's Brett Wallace. Wallace with a double and a walk in three trips. Wow, 97. Yeah. Jansen probably not available tonight. I'm guessing uh, Guerrero is probably the closer. And that gives this eighth inning opportunity to De La Rosa. I'd be inclined to leave him in there the way he's throwing. Absolutely. Took something off there and it goes to 0 and 2. Chris Johnson's on deck. There have been a total of nine runs and nine hits in this game. Very unusual line score. Five, four, and zero for Los Angeles. Four, five, and one for Houston. Still no balls, two strikes. There's been a bunch of empty innings, and a couple of times their clubs were able to bunch some hits, and of course a grand slam from Jerry Sands to Big Blow. Nottingly were to send this kid back out for the night. People will be screaming and yelling for some kind of a mental evaluation on Donnie Ball game. It's one and two. You can't expose a kid to that pressure. Strikeout. Very impressive first major league inning. Well, Ruby De La Rosa, we go to the ninth inning, and it's 5 4 Dodgers.
Take the Astros with you wherever you go this year. Subscribe to MLB.tv tonight to see every Astros game live or on demand on your computer and your favorite devices. Visit Astros.com to order and get more details. MLB.tv, baseball everywhere. Now they're also playing hockey just a few blocks away at Reliance Center, a big hockey game in the American Hockey League. It's 3-3 in the third. Hamilton and Houston. That's in the American Hockey League semifinals seventh game. Thank you, Greg. There's strike one to Jerry Sands, who hit the grand slam in the third inning. That made it five to nothing. Now five four. Milton Lopez with the slider throws it outside. It's one and one. The Astros will have Johnson Hall and Quintero do up in the last of the ninth. The Dodgers do not have any action going in their bullpen right now. Well, back. Mm -hmm. Boy, he's quick. One and two. Big night for Jerry Sands with the slam. I just got his first major league home run uh, three or four days ago, and then he had a four hit game. So after some early struggles, starting to figure things out. Cubs lead the Mets 11 1 in the seventh at Chicago. Astros will go to Chicago and San Diego on their next road trip after Sunday's game here with Arizona. Right there, and it's strike three. That's four strikeouts in a row for Astros pitching in this game. Well, the Red K's going in the scorebook tonight. Ten strikeouts for the Astros pitchers. It's that two seam tailing fastball coming back to the outside corner. Deonor Navarro, Dodger pitchers have struck out 13. Tony Gwynn Jr. is on deck. Ball one to Navarro, 28,713 to paid attendance. The finale of this series comes tomorrow afternoon at 105. And then Thursday's a day off for the Astros. Jeff Kepinger could be back. As early as Friday, if things continue to go well for him in the minor leagues. 2 0. Brandon Lyon, who started the season as the Astros' closer and is on the disabled list, has started to throw again. <laughs> 2 and 1. Jason Bourgeois to the point that he is now swinging the bat. And by the weekend, maybe he'll be taking full fledged batting practice. But he'll need a minor league rehab assignment. Foul ball. Two balls, two strikes. They're still in that delay that Greg talked about at Texas. The score four to two White Sox. Carlos Quentin hit a couple of home runs to give him 11. Adam Dunn's been in quite a slump for the White Sox. Washington six Milwaukee three they played six in Milwaukee. Corey Hart who hit three homers last night hit number four tonight. Wow. Three two now. <clears throat> Brewers looking for their fifth straight win they won eight of ten. Ground ball by Hall into right field a single for Navarro. Hit number five for the Dodgers. They've only had two hits since the slam by Sands in the third inning. Tony Gwynn Jr. bats for the first time. 200 is his average. He's driven in four. Tony's had 75 at bats this season. He showed off his defensive skills last night on the game winning hit by Hunter Pence, but. Even though he made an excellent throw to the plate, Michael Bourne beat the tag. Got in the back door. There's strike one. Dodgers are six and six in one run games. The Astros are nine and seven. The Astros have been playing a lot of well pitched, low scoring games the last week or 10 days. Now Javi Guerra is warming up. Mm. Snap throw to first. 
Navarro dives back. One and one to count. Javi Guerra is the closer du jour for he, the Dodgers. He might be. They might go batter by batter on De La Rosa. And if he gets the first two outs, maybe he stays in for a two inning save. Javi Guerra has only pitched four innings for the Dodgers. Bouncer Barmas comes in. Quick toss to Hall. No double play. Wallace just blocked that one bounce throw with his chest. Two outs, win at first. Now you're not going to get many, and you're certainly not going to get uh, Tony Gwynn Jr. He can really run. Thomas tries to set up Hall with a quick speed. And a good job here by Wallace, leaving the bag and squaring up and knocking that ball down. Sure was. Now Miles is the batter. Gwynn runs well, has five steals in six attempts. Andre Ether comes out to the on deck circle. Pitcher spot due up after Miles. Fouled away, strike one. You know, it's such a science now. We were talking earlier about Brad Mills and his decision to walk Mitchell intentionally to force a move to get Kershaw out of the game, and that did work. But he went back to Kershaw's last start. He said we had a coaching meeting earlier in the day and talked about that similar thing happening with Kershaw in his last start. They left him in to hit. So he's kind of anticipating the Dodgers would do that. They did not have anybody warming up in their pen at the time, but they did pinch hit for him with Ethier. And Ethier had an RBI single and another run scored on an error. Well, I, I think it, it's, a, it's a defendable move uh, for Mills either way. Clearly, if you if you walk Mitchell and the pitcher comes up, you know, there's plenty of logic there. But even with the way the Dodgers played it, I don't think it was a case where Brad got, you know, quote unquote, outmanaged because Ethier was available to pinch hit over there, because it does make sense to try to get Kershaw out of that game the way he was pitching. He was pitching well. Appeal to third. He checked his swing. Bill Welke on the call. One and one. Astro fans are pretty vocal tonight. They're having a good time and they're really into the game. And maybe anticipating a big bottom of the ninth like they got last night. Looks like he wants to run, but he's not. Carlos Lee in and left field, sliding, reaching down. He couldn't hold it. Here's Gwynn going to third. The throw goes into second base. The single for Miles. Lee came in, tried the sliding catch, got leather on it, but couldn't hold it. And it's first and third, two outs now for the pinch hitter, Ethier. Yeah, it looked like Carlos was going to be able to get there in time, and that ball just sank on him, and he could not finish the play. He made a wise play and throwing that ball into second base. Keeping Miles out of scoring position for the time being and keeping the force in order there. Ethier last night came off the bench. He was one for his last 30, but he delivered on an 0-2 pitch, an RBI single. In the seventh inning, a clutch hit for the Dodgers at the time. And now Brad Mills is coming out. He has bullpen action going. We'll see what happens here with Wilton Lopez. With the speedy Gwynn at third base. Might be going over some things. They're all together on yeah, what the yeah, defensive plan the, is. This is the Astros lost a run on the road trip with this play first and third situation. And they gave up a run of home plate. And the throw went through and Bill Hall tried to make the tag at second base. Didn't get the man there and the runner came home from third. So I think Mills just wanted to go back and talk about how they're going to defend this. They're going to put Ethier on so they're not going to worry about that. That'll mean for Call, who's 0 for 4 will be coming up with the bases loaded. Ethier with that 30 game hitting streak earlier this season is a 311 hitter. He has 22 runs batted in. That second on the Dodger club to Matt Kemp. 
So clearly one of their best threats. He had been banged up Sunday. Ran into the fence trying to catch a ball in Chicago. And that's why he has not been in the starting lineup last night and tonight. So Manningly sending the pinch hitter up. We'll hope that for call can come through with the bases loaded now. Yeah, and this is not an easy decision either because for calls no slouch he's a good hitter and there's no room to put him now you got the bases loaded. Really a key right here to this game. As you see the work on the bat handle. De La Rosa leaves after one inning of hitless ball with two strikeouts and an inexperienced closer will be coming in the Astros have very strong hopes to get to him. With a one run lead. That's what they want. They want to get for call here to make it only a five to four lead. Lopez gets strike one. Jamie Carroll on deck. Austin beat Cleveland four to two. Josh Beckett going to four and one with a win with a 1.69 ERA. It's one and one. You see Holland Barmas at short and second playing pretty deep. You know, you want to play as deep as possible to enhance your range. But with a guy like Fercal who can really run, you got to be careful. A little slow roller. If you play too deep, it might be tough to make a play on him. One and two. It was five nothing Dodgers in the middle of the third. Now two balls two strikes. It would be a great comeback evening for the Astros if they could pull this off. A lot of that depends on what Wilkes and Lopez does on this next pitch and you don't want to go full and have those base runners moving. So this is the pitch right here. Here's money pitch the sinker. He'll try to run it down and away. I'm assuming he's going to throw a good sinker to the outside third and down. It in. They got it. For call unhappy with the Mike Estabrook call of strike three. No runs, two hits. Strikeout number three for Lopez ends the Dodger night 5 4 Los Angeles.
So a dramatic finish last night. We're set up for the same here in game two, and we'll be with you right after the game to tell you all about it on Astros Live. Join Steve Sparks and myself. We'll have all the post-game highlights and more coming up after the game on Astros Live. But time now for the bottom of the night as we head back to Brownie and J.D., guys. Thank you, Kevin. And Sparky waving with his back turned. <laughs> Keep an eye on uh, his daughter, probably. Javi Guerra comes in with a 5-4 lead, trying for his first Major League save. Yeah, this is good stuff. He had the uh, Major League debut of De La Rosa uh, in the eighth, and he was lights out. Now Javi Guerra with four Major League games under his belt. Looking to finish this one off. Some words of encouragement there from the veteran first baseman, James Loney. Astros with a chance for another last inning win if they can get to this young right hander who was uh, quite good with their double leg club earlier this year. He was 1-0 with a 106 ERA and three saves. Chris Johnson the first man to face him. He's 0 for 2 with a sack fly. Strike for Garrett. De La Rosa had a 1-2-3-8 with two strikeouts. He left for the pinch hitter Ethier. Johnson hit that fly ball with the bases loaded. Nobody out for the sack fly in the sixth. Line drive to right field. Sands takes care of out number one. Astros baseball on Fox Sports Houston is brought to you by the Progressive Insurance Group. For a money-saving car insurance quote, call 1-800-PROGRESSIVE today. Javi Guerra is from Denton, Texas. Played for Billy Ray High School in Denton. Selected in the fourth round of the 04 draft by the Dodgers. Pitched in the Arizona Fall League for Don Mattingly's Phoenix Desert Dogs. Last winner. Strike one to Phil Hall. It, it's interesting. It, it, it's not like it was a mid game revelation that there were certain, some arms, I'm guessing, not available in that Dodger bullpen. So this must be the way the Dodgers had it mapped out with guys having the night off uh, that, that they were going to hand it to these youngsters at the end of the game. Going to the hall. And I guess it's possible that they asked Greer to get up. Uh, I didn't see it. And he just said, you know what? I just can't get it cranked up tonight. More than likely, this is something they discussed before the game. How we want to try to finish out this game if we had the lead. And they used the veteran McDougal in the seventh. And the youngsters in the eighth and ninth. Interesting. All the high drive. It's hooking. And Bill Hall has hit a foul ball. Oh, got these hands up. Oh, wow, did he put a charge in that one? And that could not have missed by much. He was doing a dance around home plate. Do your best, Billy Hatcher, punch fist impersonation. Too much hook. Now it's 0 2. Holly Guerra. <laughs> Strikes him out. Two outs. We get a pinch hitter now for Quintero on Hill Sanchez. Sanchez had a great walk last night. The 11 pitch walk, pinch hitting in the ninth inning against Kenley Jansen. Fouled off pitch after pitch. He's two for two with an RBI and a walk as a pinch hitter. Jason Michaels is in the on deck circle. Pitcher's spot due up next. Guerra last pitch Sunday at Chicago gave up two hits and two runs in one inning. Strike to Sanchez and he walked two in that game so his most recent appearance not really one reassuring his manager that he's the man for this job but things are going well so far. Fly ball right field line Sands is over. And the Dodgers have squared the series. They had to hang on after building an early 5 0 lead in the third. But Guerra picks up his first major league save. And Billings League is win number three with the run support tonight. 5 to 4 Dodgers.